Iron Man has several suits, and each of them have their own specifications. The Hydro Armor is designed to go underwater, the Stealth Armor is to become invisible and undetectable, the Space Armor to go to space and other planets, the Hulkbuster Armor to fight the Hulk. But once the Bleeding Edge, Extremis, and Endosim armors were created, they were so advanced that they made the older armors obsolete. In this video, I will ignore these particular armors and try to explore how the basic components of all his suits could be recreated in real life with the current technology. Of course, I will disregard economics, which makes it less realistic, but more fun. First, we'll start with the exoskeleton, which is the basic structure that will act as the foundation, the skeleton of the armor. So it needs to be a rigid material with a high compressive strength. Titanium is a good choice, but there are lighter materials with similar or even better strength. This material needs to surround the wearer and fit him perfectly. After that, we need motors that will make the exoskeleton move. Linear actuators produce linear movement, and there's mainly three types. Hydraulic, pneumatic, and electric. Electric actuators are actually the best choice. They're fast, they're lightweight, they're precise, they're small, and they can lock in place if the motor or the power gives out. The problems that come with any actuator is the dexterity of the movements and the power consumption. Since controllers are impossible to use inside the suit, it needs to convert brain signals into movement. The challenge here is that you need to convert brain signals to electric signals that send the interpreted information to all the actuators involved in the movement. Each of these actuators must move the exact distance and speed needed to execute the movement. Also, there won't be just one movement at a time. So we don't have the technology or understand brain signals enough to do this. A more realistic possibility without using brain activity is that the suit would detect and enhance the movements. This is possible but probably risky for injuries. Also, you would need to manually operate the weapons. Essentially, it would work like the Mark I version of the suit. Another tool that would require a brain-computer interface is the augmented reality display in the helmet. You could have that if you installed several scanning devices in the suit. Multispectral cameras, microphones, a system that monitors the suit, radar, lidar, etc. You would also need Jarvis. This would be your personal butler for the armor. General artificial intelligence is not there yet, which is good because we're not ready for it. But we do have several AIs and software that would essentially have similar capabilities, except for the human-like conversations and the sassy remarks. If we look at human versus computer reaction time, we're not even close. So if you had a software that could detect incoming objects, the computer could make you move out of the way before you even thought about it. All that software with the exoskeleton will need a lot of energy to keep running. In the Iron Man armor, the miracle answer to that is the arc reactor. In the comics, the armor can also generate power from solar energy, electrical supercapacitors, and a beta particle absorber. This just means that it absorbs nearby electrons. All these are possible to have, but they're not as cool as the arc reactor. So let's look at that instead. The concept of the arc reactor is based on cold fusion. The problem with fusion is that it needs to be extremely hot to work. They require about 100 million degrees, and being that close to his chest isn't safe, whatever insulator you might use. So, cold fusion would allow the power of nuclear fusion, but at room temperature. The old theory was to use palladium to bond two hydrogen atoms together. However, it doesn't work, and there isn't any new theories that makes cold fusion possible. The only possibility for an arc reactor would be a miniaturized particle accelerator. The Iron Man armor has repulsor in his gloves and boots, allowing him to fly. The propulsion is strong since the suit can reach speeds higher than the speed of sound. We do have jetpacks and rockets, 
but none of them are that small. The repulsors would probably work in the same fashion by burning a fuel like hydrogen with an oxidizer like oxygen. The only difference here is that somehow, Tony Stark miniaturized the technology and made it more powerful. Also, it seems that the propulsion is powered by the arc reactor. The repulsors in the gloves can also send energy blasts that can neutralize opponents. It seems to be a focused beam of energy. The type of energy could be plasma, and since the arc reactor is supposed to be a cold fusion device, the beam could be made of cold plasma, somehow. The most important part of the armor would be the protective bulletproof shell. For a material to be bulletproof, it must be harder than the bullet to break it, or the form to absorb the energy. Since it's a hard metal shell, it has to be tougher than the bullet. In the movies, it's made of a gold titanium alloy. This could work since titanium is used on military planes, but there are other materials that are lighter and stronger. For example, some ceramics are lighter than titanium and almost as hard as diamonds. The problem is that they're more brittle and they can shatter on impact. The absorption of those impacts would make the armor even tougher. If there were small shock absorbers between the armor plating and the exoskeleton, the plates would absorb the impacts a lot more, which would make the armor much more durable. Trying to build an Iron Man suit in real life would lead to redesigning the project entirely. With our current technology, the armor would probably be the size of a jet, which defeats the purpose. The main problem with building it would be the generation of power and flight. If you have any ideas I didn't cover, leave them in the comments. And thanks for watching.